Okay, this will be a video of how to install the plug and play uh, here version one that I'm making and selling for the solo. Uh, it comes pre-assembled like this where the, sol the here is on the mast already bonded on there with uh, this is uh, Gorilla double back tape. It works real well. And this is all ready to go. This is a fold down mast with the two wires that you need for a solo, which is the GPS and, and the compass wires already split out. It comes with three screws to mount it, or you can stick it on with double back tape onto your solo on the top there. It, I also use, usually I'll send one of these 3D printed caps if you don't want to, to modify your original shiny cap. That's what I call it. It has holes and a place for the wire, which you would have to do to your original one if you want to use it, which is here. You can pop that off like that. Um, that's the first step. Okay. Second step installing it is take out the seven screws that hold this all together. I'll pause and do that. Okay, the screws are out, flip it over, pull that connection there, and you can pull it off the board too, I'm not going to use that. Then we have these two screws and this shield, this is a V2 shield uh, that I have on mine, you may have the copper looking one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pause and take these two screws out and peel this off of GPS. Okay, I pulled out the first two screws and then the shield. And now this green stock Reve GPS. Uh, I just need to remove these two screws here. I'll do that. Okay, now that goes wherever. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the existing screw holes that are here and here and take a sixteenth drill bit or a 1.5 millimeter and drill that through so we're going to drill each one of those holes down through out the top with a, with a small drill bit If you're going to use your original cap, you want to do that with it on so that they come through. Let's see. So you would drill that through all the way through this cap also. And if you're using your cap, you're going to have to drill a hole around here all the way through to get your wire through or at least through the cap itself. Let's see if I can get that back off. I'm not going to use this because I'm... This is just for uh, an example. But you, you don't have to drill through this part because there is enough clearance between the cap and, and this part for these thin wires to go and wrap underneath here, which is how you'll how you'll route the w wires. But the cap does need a hole, or you can use this one, which is what I'm planning to do on this. Next, you want to take this. It's going to come together just because it, it's how I send them, but you want to just take this hinge screw out and remove the base just to get 
get everything out of the way. Okay. And then we'll take this and this. And we're going to screw it all on with the screws provided. Let's see if I can get it in there. That one there. And this one here. both holes I right, just got them started here and I'm gonna put them down on here and run them into those holes I just drilled just to see if they fit and so I can drill the third hole I'm gonna pause while I get this lined up and screw it in and then I'll show you how it looks Okay, I've got those back down into the holes that I drilled. And I'm going to drill that holds it together so I can drill this one in the right spot. And I'll show you where that goes through in just a second. I'm going to drill that third hole. Right there. And it comes down through I don't know if you can see that, but it comes right down into that area right there. It just doesn't cause any problems with the uh, with your little latch. Okay, and then we're gonna we'll be able to put the third screw in here. I'm not gonna do it yet because we still need to put this back on the solo first. So, I'm going to run this in just to make sure it runs through there and, and then take it back out. Okay, I'll run it down in there. Oh, you can even see it. There it is. Looks good. So now I'm going to take it back apart and then I'll be right back. So now that we've come to there, We've got everything pre-drilled and ready to go back together. Here's what we do. We take the wires and we run them through the base and through the cap that we've got ready to go. And we let it dangle. Just gonna run it in there like that. We're gonna run these also through this area right there right through there pull through okay now we've got this assembly strung and we need to plug it in so the, the GPS one will go back here I haven't unplugged mine I'm not actually installing this on mine but I'm gonna leave it in there like it's plugged in and then we'll plug this one in here so those will both be plugged in and then we'll leave these dangling over here and we'll put this together that's when we will put in put all our screws back in all seven of these screws 
I'll pause and do that. Okay, I've got the battery tray back in with the screws. Now I'm gonna just take this like so. Make sure my wires are in there and not bound up. Make sure they go through. You don't need a whole lot of slack. There's going to be a little slack so that it can, so that your mast can fold down. But you don't need much, just a little bit. So kind of hold this all in place. And we're going to put these screws, these three screws that hold the here base in. Let's see if I can hit the holes. Okay, those are in. This is this last one. You can't get to it unless you have this uh, off of there. Didn't quite hit the hole. There we are. Snug. And then you can take your mast and the hinge screw. Put the hinge screw back through. And screw it on. How, how tight you make that is up to you. you kind of just make it where it snaps in nice because this is this will lock in and it can lock in tighter if you squeeze this a little tight but don't over tighten them they are plastic and just a little snug usually does fine it's a locking nut with um a Teflon locking nut there so it's not going to back out. Nice snap in, snap down, and there it is. Now the only thing left to do is parameters. If it doesn't automatically configure in your Arducopter firmware, you can run a Solex script that will change the parameters that you need for the stock firmware. And I believe if you have Open Solo 4 installed, uh, it automatically changes. And it's just one parameter that's the main parameter that needs to be changed is a uh, compass underscore orient needs to be zero for the here. And now I'll uh, pause and I'll bring up Solex so we can see that process. As I continued on, I was about to go and change the parameters, so I brought the solo up and the controller up, and I'm going to do this. And I, if you remember earlier, I did not plug in the GPS or the compass. The compass is still under, still plugged in on my leg, but I get this sound. And that sound is because I didn't plug in the GPS to the main board. So before I continue, I'm just going to open this back up and plug it in so that I can continue without that noise. But I wanted to leave that on the video so that uh, if you get that error, you'll know you didn't plug in the GPS. Okay, now, as you can see, it's on and going. I've got magnetic interference on my controller because it needs compass calibration. And this is a solo that has the stock firmware. 
<clears throat> so what you need to do, and you're going to need to calibrate the compass either way. So go into Solex. And I haven't connected to the Wi-Fi yet, the, Solex, the Solo Link Wi-Fi yet. Because first we need to make sure two things. In app settings, you have to have advanced mode checked. And once you do, you can you will have the firmware updates at the bottom here. And it'll bring up all the things that are available. And if you go to the here compass parameters, it says available. So I'm going to download that, download complete. And then I can go back out and uh, connect to my solo link Wi-Fi. Where is it? Give it a second. There it is. Connected. And then looking for vehicle. Reading parameters. I, have it, I had it muted. If you don't have it muted, it'll say connected to vehicle. Vehicle type is solo. And then simply go in here to firmware updates. Select your here compass parameters and it will tell you what it's going to do. If you read this, it tells you what it's going to do. And it changes, it makes sure all the settings are correct. But the main thing it's changing is compass orient that one to zero. Okay. So you hit install. Install package. Let it finish. And then it says power cycle solo when complete. Okay. So, turn it off and back on. Hmm. I don't know where I lost my volume here, but... It's probably on mute. So, once it's rebooted, that's when you'll want to go. Make sure it's connected again. Connected to vehicle. Type solo. Alright. So then you want to go to your calibrations. I would suggest you calibrate IMU first, which is the level calibration. On the first step, you want to have it completely level. On the rest of the steps of that calibration, for instance, when you're doing left and right and up, down, and upside down, those don't have to be exactly level, but the first one does. Very close to level as you can get it. After that's done, recycle the solo, start it, turn it off and turn it back on. When it comes up, calibrate compass and go through that process also. And when you're done, you're looking good and it'll be ready to fly. And then that's it.